Hey guys, what's up? It's Andrew here again, as you can see by the title screen. This week's is going to be top 12 underrated lists. Now, keep in mind what I mean by underrated is differentiate between unfairly hated and, um, oh, I forget what the other one was, but this, this list is going to specifically be movies that I think are hidden gems that you just never hear about. These are movies that, like, you, you, you will not... Even in the horror community, you don't hear a lot talked about. So, I feel like these movies are good, but just kind of disappeared off the face of the earth. Now, a lot of people will automatically put Black Christmas on there, and that's always in their list. I actually kept that one off because I do feel like the horror community talks about it. But as, like, um, you would be right in putting it in with, like, underrated movies in general as it pertains to like pop culture like that no one would have known about it outside the horror community very few people know about it but it's a hidden classic but I just kept it off of there because I mean it's on everybody's list and it's just it feels like it doesn't like I wanted to have some more like unknowns on here um, also I could have put like the woman in black mama deliver us from evil which you don't really hear talked about and I feel like are actually good films but I feel like they're one, they're too new. This one you do kind of hear talked about. Um, but I mean, we'll see. Time will tell whether these fall under the radar. But these are actually, I think, hidden gems that I think you don't really hear much about. But without further ado, now it's time to get into my top 12 list. All right, starting in at number 12 is actually, uh, since Screen Factory released this, I think it's a little bit more well known. And some people. Um, some people have probably heard of it. I mean, probably all of you that are watching this video have heard of it. It's Terror Train from 1980. Now, of all of the early slashers, I feel like this one, and especially Jamie Lee Curtis's films, this one falls the most under the radar. I mean, you hear all the time about Halloween, The Fog, Prom Night, you know, and, and all those films that she was in in the early 80s. Um, even Halloween 2, of course. Um, but this one here kind of falls under the radar, and I actually really think this film is like a really good film. Um, pretty decently well directed. Um, got an interesting cast. Got some really fun people in it. Um, yeah, I just have a good time with it. Um, it's got a really cool ending, too. I, I kind of just, it's just a hidden gem, again, I think, from 80. But it's number 12, because I, I think that enough people know about it, but it isn't still really talked about. <laughs> number 11 um, is going to be George Romero's Land of the Dead. Now, I could have put any one, I could have put Survival of the Dead on here also. But this one specifically, because I didn't really, like, I remember whenever this was coming out. Like, I remember like the the trailers for it and everything and then I never heard anything about it and actually when I really started to get into horror about 2012-2013 um, th this movie was completely off my radar I totally forgotten about it and then I watched it and I was like damn this is a really good movie I was like I was taken back at like how like much I really appreciated the film and you know it's it's just sad that this one's forgotten about. Like it just, it, it like you just never hear anybody talking about this one of George Romero's films, and I personally like it. So, all right, that was number eleven. That's number ten is the Uninvited. Now this is on my top ten um, favorite uh, remakes list, and. Honestly, you don't really hear many people talking about it. Now, I have seen top 50 lists where some people will actually have this movie on there. I do really enjoy this film, and in fact, I did watch it a couple weeks ago, and I really liked it again. Like, again, like, it has a twist ending and everything, but I actually, if it didn't have the twist ending, I still would have really liked it. Like, it was a really good character movie, and I just really enjoyed it. Sorry, I'm going to turn on this light. Maybe you'll see me a little better. Eh didn't make much of a difference but anyways uh, yeah that's number 10 I really think it's good I don't really hear talked about a whole whole lot so <laughs> number nine is gonna be a movie that I I saw like probably 2013 I've actually only watched it once or twice since I got it but I vacancy is my number 10 or number nine list on this list um, yeah, this one, it's a short, short um, film. It's 85 minutes, um, you know, with credits. It, it runs about 81 minutes or 80 minutes without. Um, 
and it, it's just really good. It, as, as you can tell, Vacancy it takes place at a hotel, and it basically plays out like a home invasion movie, but at a hotel. And for me, like the the tension there, the tension in this movie is just so brilliant. It's so well done. I really, really love it. Um, yeah, that's I, I and I hear nobody talking about this movie. Um, in fact, I had to really search to see this movie, and I I think it's really underrated. And it has Luke Wilson and Kate Beckinsale. And this one of their movies just really flew under the radar for me. Yeah, it's really tense. Um, number eight is going to be a movie I've talked about a couple of times on here, and it's Seven Nights of Darkness. Um, yeah, this movie, you, I mean, if you hear people talk about it, they will say it's a gem. But you just don't hear many people talk about it. But the people that do talk about it say it's a really good film. And I am one of those people. I think this is a brilliant film. Um, you know, it, it's basically uh, six reality contestants are, like, staking for, like, one million dollars. But they have to stay at this abandoned asylum for seven nights. And it's they have to do different things each day. And they have to complete these different tasks and such things. So it, it's really, really good. I really, really enjoy this film. And but I mean, this one is made for five thousand dollars, and I mean, you can find it on this, or it actually has an individual release. I highly recommend checking it out. Um, it, it the budget, the low budget, definitely shows on it, but I still enjoy the film. Um, number seven is going to be The Messengers. <laughs> I've talked about this one a couple of times, and this very well could have been on a guilty pleasures list, but I actually do consider this a pretty well-made film, so it doesn't fit that guilty pleasure. Um, but yeah, this one here, I, it's basically a combination between like The Shining, The Birds, House on Haunted Hill. It's kind of a mixture of a lot of those things, and a lot of Eastern, uh, like there's like an Eastern legend where uh, oh no, that's actually the sequel. Sorry, um, but th this movie, I really do, um, I really do enjoy this movie. I, I, I think it's because I watched it a ton whenever I was little. Like I think I've said this before, but like on the HBO channel, um, this was on like every single day, and we would just watch it over and over and over. And so I have a lot of really good memories from this film. Um, you know, Kristen Stewart's in it, early Kristen Stewart, and. Um, I, you know, I, I'm one who I actually really do like Kristen Stewart. And, I mean, there, there's some really good, like, Dylan McDermott's in it. Um, and then Penelope Ann Miller is the mom. I really do like their characters. It's um, it's a good character film. Like, it's a jump scare film, but it's one of those where, like, again, you don't hear talked about. I've seen one person have it on their top 50 list. I was actually really happy about that. I'm not sure if it would make my top 50. It'd be really close, but... We'll see. I actually might have to do that list here pretty soon. Um, <coughs> so, without further ado, number um, six is The Right. This movie, again, is one that's really under the radar. It was big whenever it came out, and then it just dropped off the face of the earth. Not a whole lot of people talk about it. I don't think I've ever seen this in the top 50, like, favorite horror film list. This one would probably make my list. Um, I love Anthony Hopkins in this film, and, um, oh, what's his name? Oh, Colin Donahue. He is really good in this film as well, but, I mean, the shining spot is Anthony Hopkins. It's actually a really cleverly written film. It's not one of those that's very, that, it, it like, it'll, it'll be honest with itself in a lot of ways when it's being ridiculous, like, it'll tell you it's being ridiculous, like, it knows. And so with that, I admire its, like, honesty. And, like, it's, it feels like a really genuine film to me, to be honest. I've always really liked this film. It's, um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's a possession film that I think does a really good job at holding to its, I mean, you, how many possession films have we all seen? But this is one I think is a shining spot. But again, you don't hear much about it anymore. Um, yeah. Then, now that we're down to number five. Now this film, jeez, man. Um, <laughs> Sorority Row. I think this was number three on my remakes list. Um, man, I, I love this movie to death. It is, it is the, just the, one of the most brilliant slasher films. It's actually one of the very few. I know I said no new movies, but this one makes it on there just because it fell off the face of the earth. 
This is another one. I mean, this is from the mid 2000s. No, this is actually from 2010. That just goes to show you how under the radar this one was. This I don't think it came out in the theaters. I didn't see any trailers for it. Um, completely off the radar. Never even heard of it. I had heard of House on Sorority Row before I'd watched that one. Didn't even know it had a remake. And I think in 2013 or 14, I finally found it and was like, man, I'll watch it. And it was such a good time. Like, it's got some really good kills. It's pretty tense. Um, the characters are all really fun to be around. Like, a couple of the characters are annoying. But other than that, like, I really, really like it. It's, it's a really good remake. Like, Man, like, yeah, I just, I can't say enough good about this, but I, I never even knew it existed. I had to, like, I found it on accident, actually. And even if I wouldn't have found it, I still probably wouldn't even know it existed. I mean, it's, it, it's just, you know, it's just one of those films. I mean, I really love it, though. Um, number four, um, actually, I'm going to switch this up. Number four is going to be The People Under the Stairs, and I'm actually going to be buying the collector's edition of it soon. But there it is. It's the people under the stairs. Um, yeah, I mean, this one could honestly be on everybody's list. It's it's one of those films that it, I mean, everybody that's seen it loves the film. It's one of those. It's one. It's Wes Craven's one of his most underrated films. Um, yeah, I mean, it, it for for me, it's just it's just one of those. It's just such a good time. I love it. Um, number three is Urban Legend. Now I don't. Now to say the least, I I don't know if this one is as much. I think it. I think it's really just forgotten. Like uh, to me, it's one of those um, sc like scream like '90s slashers. I mean, it fits the formula right to the T. Something about this film though has so much charm that I just really love watching this. Like I can just watch this over and over and over again. The more I watch it, the more I like it. I can. I just watched this about two weeks ago, and I really loved it again. Like. It's one of those, like, again, college campus. Maybe it's the, you know, the, the kind of, like, the I'm on a college campus type thing. Maybe. I don't know. But, I mean, this one, I just, you don't really hear many people talk about it anymore. I mean, it was big when it came out, and now it's off the face of the earth. I mean, it's, uh, yeah. I, I absolutely love it, though. Number two, Dead Silence. This is the the James Wan film that he released between Saw and Insidious, um, and again, this is one I picked up on accident after I saw um, Saw Haha ha. um, after I saw um, Insidious again. I really I saw it on the um, most like list, and I saw that he had also done this film, and then I checked it out. I think it was on um, I don't know if it still is, but it was on Netflix. I think it might still be on there but uh, yeah I saw this film and I really 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 loved it um, it's got this really cool urban legend type feel I know I just said urban but it really does have the urban legend type feel like small town like thing and I again I just don't hear anybody talk about this one either and again Lee Winnell was the writer of this one it's really it really you can see James Wan kind of working and building his tense atmosphere in this film that it he just does so brilliantly um, yeah it, this is this one is again a hidden gem for sure um, that's number two and number one this one again you guys might disagree with um, but this deadly blessing, Wes Craven. Again, I might be biased because Wes Craven is my favorite director. Um, I flip flop between Dead Silence and this one. I just went with this one just because I think I do prefer this film. But I do think this one is like just, it's got this really, really perfect atmosphere for like, you know, you're out in the Amish country and you know, you see this and, it, and, and it's, it's almost like a cult type thing, but it, it's like, they're, uh, yeah, it's just really weird how it is. It's like an Amish cult, sort of, and and it, it is just, it, it has this perfect atmosphere of, like, if you're watching this in the middle of summer, like, you'd love it. The ending is so bizarre, but other than that, I mean, other than the final 15 minutes, it's, like, it's got this, like, really brilliant, brilliant atmosphere that I just love. Um, but, yeah, that's my number one. Um... Yeah, I mean, hopefully you guys enjoyed this list again, and I I, <laughs> I went back and forth on some of these. I always have fun making these ones. 
Um, so yeah, that that that's that um, for this list. I think next time I'm gonna do a video of I'm gonna do an update video because all of my um, May um, movies are actually in already. So I probably will do an update, but that's probably two videos from now. Um, the next video I'm gonna do is probably going to be. I might cheat and do because uh, I I I'm, I'm like getting inspired by some of these that, uh, that that like I see moods and other people do like the top ten horror like top ten Tuesdays list. Um, I might do um, top top ten. Um, I think I'd have to go with ten because I don't think I have twelve of trilogies. But I'm gonna cheat and do like trilogies of like just like three mo any three movies in a series that fits into an actual trilogy, even if they're not a trilogy anymore. I might cheat and do that because I just don't own enough trilogies to be able to do you know what it, like just regular trilogies or whatever. So yeah, um, yeah, I think I'm gonna do that. Um, and I can't remember what else. I, I'm going to start working on a top 50, like a top 50 horror films and a top 30 slashers list. Um, so those are probably going to be my next videos for the next month. So I'll probably, next week I'll tell you what, I'm actually going to do my top 30 slashers list. So, and I feel like those are cemented in stone because like you're not going to see any vid any more like great, like, Slashers are gonna make my top 30 now, unless they, unless the next Friday the 13th or Halloween's really good, and it could. Um, but yeah. So without further ado, that's what to look forward to. So thanks, guys. Always comment. I always love, enjoy, and I'll get back to you when I can. Always subscribe. Thanks, guys, for tuning in, and I really enjoy, enjoy it. Hope you have a good week. See ya.